Uh, what you're seeing is, is, is kind of been a, a dream is certainly a good word for it, but certainly a, a, a goal for Kevin Lee and myself and Seth. Kevin and I have known each other for about 15 years. You may know Kevin Lee, the little monster from mm -hmm. Monster Cable. So he and I go way back and just became good friends along this kind of seat industry uh, kind of journey we've all been on. We always had talked about jokingly at some point we want to work together because we kind of dug the vibe and the energy and, 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 and the way we thought and collaborated on company kind of interactions. Mm -hmm. And actually, as Kevin was starting to develop the, the Beats concept, mm -hmm. I was a sounding board for him when it was just an idea. And he actually came to Portland and, mm -hmm. and actually put together some of the first monster initiatives around how he would develop Beats as a product and a brand um, with me. So mm -hmm. I got to collaborate. So I got some good insight to this category when mm -hmm. I was just a friend, right. not part of it. I was actually with a company called Planar at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting, about two years ago, Kevin gave me a call and said, it's time. And I'm like, time for what? <laughs> and he said, let's go do a company. Let's go build a company. So we got together. <clears throat> And one of the things on an emotional level that we really loved is we were all very passionate about music. And, and Kevin probably amplified more than the three of us. But, but certainly all three agreed that music was a kind of a common thread that we wanted to build this company on. And for us, kind of that passion played in towards, we all had a kind of an iPod playlist of different songs that meant something. When I had my first child, or when I remember meeting my wife, or mm -hmm. my wedding night, or my breakups with my girlfriend in high school, or we were laughing listening to Chicago last night. I think I slow danced with my junior high and my high school dates at some prom to some of their music. Right. So we used to laugh about, we all have these soundtracks of kind of what we've listened to and, and, and represents your life, and that's where the name came from. Mm -hmm. We said, you know, as we were starting to go through the, the branding concept of this, and create an iconic logo as well as a name. We love that idea of a soundtrack of mm -hmm. life, and that's where Soul Republic came from. Mm -hmm. and, and we were pretty excited about, you know, the fact that music has so much uh, impact on people and can can make you run faster or jump hard, jump higher, and and that you know everyone's got that soundtrack in their life. And we felt we could build a company built off this music idea. Headphones would be certainly the category we, we launched it with, but given our, our love of music, we may go into other areas long term as well. But mm -hmm. certainly at the core of what we do, it will be headsets. Then we started talking about, is there room? Because let's face it, we're not the only ones seeing that growth in market. Sure. And this is actually an overly crowded space right now. Mm -hmm. What I got very excited about was when you looked at all the competitors, about 90% of them sat into what I call the traditional four P's of marketing approach. They were brands that we knew, whether they were the Asian brands that did consumer electronics for 30 years now that were putting headsets in that they just grabbed out of a Chinese factory, right. or if they were some of the higher end audio brands that were putting headsets in, they were all kind of doing their own price, performance, and into the resellers they've known for some time with their, with their brand, but none of them really got what the lifestyle into marketing really meant, except for two. And I was really thrilled when I saw the success of those two companies in the last four to five years. One was Skullcandy, mm -hmm. a small company in Utah, really more of a marketing company. They weren't a technology company per se at first. They were all about a cool looking logo and a great brand that they could stick into the board sports and create a, a 20 or less kind of product, price product that was for a six to six, you know, kind of a disposable headset mm -hmm. to listen to some tunes and you're rocking down the slopes. And Beats at the same time with Kevin's support went and did something a bit different but in a similar vein. They went and actually, with a lot of engineering strength at Monster, created a really great sounding product and showed consumers that sound actually mattered. Then they harnessed the power of, of obviously the artist at Interscope and you know, with Dr. Dre and his relationships in the music industry and eventually into some of the pro athletes mm -hmm. to really say, this is cool. And I kind of call it the, the Air Jordan kind of phenomena back in, you know, as a Portland analogy. When I was a kid playing hoops, you know, I had the, the Nike years for 50 bucks, and a few of us could afford, if we got them for a gift or saved up, some Air Jordans for 200 bucks. They were very aspirational, they were what was the coolest, but not everyone could afford or have those. So Kevin and I both looked at this and said, you know what, there's room. There's room with explosion going on at Beats at $300 ASP and this explosion with Skull Candy at $20 that if we could take and, and develop a technology that was really relevant and accessible, Great sounding audio at $100. And so one of the things that I'm real proud about is the hyper focus this team was able to create around the product development approach. We didn't just grab an, a knockoff product and put it in the market and say we're here. We spent the better part of nine months with a whole lot of design and, and, and mechanical and acoustical engineers. The, the lights came on for us for the engineers to say you've got five criteria. Go away into your labs and you come out of here and you've got to design me a product that when it's done and said, the criteria was create a low cost enough structure and mechanical and material that I could make this accessible. I want a hundred dollar incredible sounding product. Mm -hmm. So go show me that it either can't be done or you can make it happen. 
We also realized that a lot of our primary researchers said kids were breaking these things all the time. Mm -hmm. Buying new headsets every six months because the ones they had broke when they opened them up or put them in their backpack. So we said start working with some advanced polymers. We had some really good understanding of plastics and material mm -hmm. science and, and we had some great partnerships and said give me something that's indestructible that truly wouldn't break, you know, if, if the kids had it in their backpack or was thrown around or dropped it. We also said at the end of the day though, our core competency is acoustic. So it better jump out at people when they put it on and go, what, at $100 it sounds this good. We said it really has to make people go, wow, didn't know it could sound this great at this price point. The other thing is we realized that fashion had a huge influence on consumer electronics. You know, you look at the iPhone and iPods and, 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 and all the Mac computers in the airs, they're cool looking. So we felt the same thing here. It better look good on, it better have the ability to blend into fashion. And for us, the meaningful differentiation really came into the product when we started realizing with this, what we call the track system, we could actually put the sound drivers on and remove not only the driver, but the cables we figured out how to take out. And what got us excited is now I could actually start to custom configure. So what if I put a red band with my V8 driver with a white cable? Maybe that's what gets me excited. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I put a blue with a red and a purple or have some sort of collaboration on this. But the point is, could I create a product that if they bought it for $99, maybe they could actually buy a, an accessory for the accessory, mm -hmm. right? To actually start personalizing this. Over time, we may have a great ability to personalize our headset and it'll be the first one of its kind in that regard. As we worked through about six months of the actual process of iterating on it, we came up with the Trax platform. And so today we have two platforms. We have the Trax HD at 129 and we have the Trax at 99. So we have two different versions of these in multiple colorways. So on our Trax HD, we've got a gray, we've got a white and a black. On our Trax, we've got a red, we've got a white and we have a black. And of course the goal, as you've kind of heard me hint about, is future collaborations and what we call separates where we can start doing different colorways and different collaborations as you even see here for our skate, surf and snowboard and some of our tastemakers. We're even doing some designs that actually may show up in special retailers in the country in the months to come.